This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Lucid reported a Q2 net loss of nearly $800 million, but it also got another $1.5 billion in commitments to the company. Nearly 2,400 air sedans were delivered to customers in the second quarter, a jump of over 70% compared to a year ago. The vehicle benefited from an up to 10% price cut, which meant some models had over $16,500 slashed from their sticker price. Those vehicle sales brought in a little more than $200 million of revenue, a jump of 33% from Q2 of 2023. But now let's get back to that big investment. Lucid entered an agreement with an affiliate of the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which owns about 60% of Lucid, for it to purchase $750 million of the EV startup stock and for it to provide Lucid with another $750 million line of credit. Lucid will use the infusion to help launch the Gravity SUV by the end of this year, and it also gives it enough assets to last until the fourth quarter of next year. But Lucid plans to launch more models with a starting price under $50,000 in 2026, so it will need even more money. However, CEO Peter Rawlinson recently said that the Saudi PIF would remain a long-term partner, and so far it's invested $8 billion into Lucid. The giant German supplier Continental is considering spinning off its automotive operations, quote, due to the increasing dynamic markets in the industry. It says the board will come to a decision by the end of this year, and if approved, which it sounds like it will be, will be put to a shareholder vote in April of next year. If that's approved, it hopes to complete the spinoff by the end of 2025, and it says it's already preparing for that to happen. The automotive division makes things like brakes, comfort systems, sensors, displays, software platforms, and driver assistance systems. Conti says the move will allow it to adjust to changes in the market easier, to focus more on software-driven tech, and quote, harness its full potential for creating value. Last year, its automotive operations generated sales of 20.3 billion euros and employed about 100,000 people. The tire division and Conti Tech, which is a plastics and materials company, will remain under the Continental umbrella, and they make about the same amount of money and employ about the same amount of people as the automotive operations. After poor results in America last quarter, Nissan is offering buyouts to salaried employees in the U.S. It says they were offered to some white-collar workers who are at least 52 years old and that it only accounted for a small percentage of the roughly 12,000 non-hourly workers it employs. But if Nissan continues to perform like it has in the U.S., those buyouts could turn into layoffs. Sales were down over 3% last quarter, its inventory was over 100 days supply at the end of February versus an average of 76 days, and it offered the highest purchase incentives of any full-line brand in March at over $3,700 per vehicle. And in other Nissan news, the automaker is testing paint that's designed to keep a vehicle's interior cooler and reduce its energy usage. The automaker partnered with Radicool, a company that specializes in radiative cooling products to create the paint. The companies are testing it on an NV100 small van that's operating as a service vehicle at an airport in Japan. Initial tests show that the paint reduced the vehicle's surface temperature up to 12 degrees Celsius and its interior up to 5 degrees compared to traditional paint. Nissan's cool paint incorporates metamaterial and synthetic composite materials that redirect the sun's rays away from the vehicle. But the paint is thicker than traditional automotive paint, so Nissan is still working on a process to apply it that meets its quality standards. But it says that it sees strong potential for the paint, especially for light commercial vehicles that spend most of their day driving. Michigan is leading the charge in mobility and innovation, and I can't think of a better state to be in.
EV prices are actually on track to break even with ICE vehicles as early as next year in the U.S. A study from Goldman Sachs says falling battery prices due to a 70% plunge in lithium prices will make EVs more affordable. According to Kelly Blue Book, the average cost of a new EV in June was more than 56,000 bucks compared to just over 48 grand for an ICE vehicle. But battery costs are expected to go from $151 per kilowatt hour in 2023 to 91 bucks in 2025, a nearly 40% drop. So Goldman Sachs predicts the break-even point between EVs and ICEs will be achieved sometime between 2025 and 2026. Its cost of ownership includes the price of the vehicle, fuel or battery recharging, repairs and maintenance over the lifetime of the car. But it doesn't factor in government subsidies for purchasing an EV. Chinese automaker Dong Feng is closing in on a deal to build vehicles in Italy. Reuters reports that talks between the Italian government and the automaker are in an advanced stage to build a car plant in the country. The Italian government could take a minority stake in the investment, and it could also include investment from other Italian suppliers. Stellantis is currently the only major automaker that builds cars in Italy, but Italy is aiming to boost production in the country from 800,000 in 2023 to 1.3 million units. So it's looking for anyone to help hit that target. The first vehicle from the joint venture between Chinese tech giant Huawei and car company BAIC was just unveiled. Called the Stellato S9, the electric luxury sedan is aimed at competing with vehicles like the Mercedes-Benz EQS, but with a much lower price. Single motor versions feature 227 kilowatts of power, while dual motor versions come with 385 kilowatts. Both are equipped with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, which offers 816 kilometers or 507 miles of range on single motor models. And the dual motor is rated at 721 kilometers or 448 miles of range. And that's based on the Chinese test cycle. In addition to a 15.6 inch touchscreen up front, the rear features a 13.2 inch tablet in the center armrest and a giant 32-inch projector screen between the seats. It's also available with several driver assistance features, including hands-free driving capability. The Stellato S9 is priced between roughly $56,000 and $63,000. Humanoid robots are on their way to replacing actual humans on the production line. A Chinese robotics company we've reported on a few times called Ubitech is teaming up to expand the automotive capabilities of its robots, currently called Walker S. They've already started tests at Neo and Zeker factories, doing things like inspecting seat belts and body panels. So they can't do everything yet. But now Ubitech is working with Geely, parent company to Zeker, to find even more applications for Walker S in manufacturing. And it's also working with another company to collect data on production lines that use robots and to come up with plant designs that are better suited for robots. Ubitech also has collaborated with Dong Feng and FAW Volkswagen. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC, where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, lighten up. But with world-class composite material, Tajin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. 
As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. Keeping your heart racing in and out of the gym. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza Sport AS tires with a 50,000 mile limited warranty.